Hi everybody, I have a 30 minute session that I'm doing for a client today. So I'm gonna be sharing energy work and wisdom. I'm gonna go ahead and go through the goals here. We have a couple things on the list and then I'm gonna be getting started. Okay, so the first thing is, I want to release all attachments that no longer fulfill me or hold me back from evolving. Okay. Okay. I want to understand my relationship with my daughter and what I need to do that would be more helpful for her and me and for her daughter. Cool. Okay. Hmm. Also, I want to know how I can grow, evolve to a higher level of healing others. I am a massage therapist. And how I can attract more financial abundance. I don't need to be rich, but I would like to have enough to support myself for travel and fun in my life. And my daughter, her wife, my granddaughter, <laughs> if that is part of my purpose in this life. Okay. Hmm. These are some really nice goals. You're a really nice person. There's like a really nice kindness here that you have with your family members. Okay. Okay, you ready? I'm going to relax now. Make sure there's no distractions here. Okay, here we go. Okay. Attachments. Relationships. Hmm. So it's a bit, the, the first feeling I get, it feels just very tight. It's hard to describe. It's, it's more so in the heart and the solar plexus, but it goes down a little bit further than that. It just feels tight. And there's literally like... Uh, you know, is it called a coax cable? It's like for your um, actually watching cable on TV. And um, so there's this cable, but there's lots of them in a bundle. And they have the black color and then the silver at the end. So there's a bundle of these. Hmm. This could go pretty deep here. You you have such a lighthearted and beautiful way of expressing what you want to um, explore today, um, but there's a lot of deeper stuff going on here. So I go and I touch these cables and I tell them that it's it's time we're going to be releasing you today. We're going to be moving on now. And when I go and touch these cables, they actually electrocute my hands. Hmm. This is really interesting. I'm going to have to do some real detective work here. Because as I'm looking at this, you're also not fully merged with it either. It's almost like you're standing outside the circle of our exploration. I don't know for safety purposes or what, but I'm trying to bring you in as well so we can get some more feedback on this. So I'm gonna have to do a little more detective work. Oh, so I, so okay, this is the next thing. I'm acknowledging you are out there. And I tell you that I see you out there. And I project to you some of my ideas and my thoughts. And I show you that our hands are one. And I take our hand, your hand and my hand, and then I place our hand on the cables themselves. And I tell you it's really good to acknowledge these types of things. Because whatever this attachment is about, it's almost like... It's like you do know what this is about inside because you're choosing to not want to go there. But I'm getting you 
vibrationally reconnected in a way that you can acknowledge the existence, the reality of it, and come to a place where you can actually say deep down inside that I am ready. Because at the conscious level, we know we want to do this. We're ready to always ready to let go of attachments. The thing about attachments is they can also go really deep beneath the conscious level. So what are these attachments about? Sometimes we don't realize that we're attached to something. Maybe it was a long time ago, but there's still stuff that hasn't been worked on um, because there was an intermission on that one. <laughs> so this, we got to look at this. We got to refresh your energy field with it. The deeper parts of you that are that are hesitant, that are kind of standing back, you got to refresh them and say, it's going to be okay. We're going to take a look at this. We're going to we're going to let it go. We're going to let it go. We're going to let it go deep down inside too. Not just in the mind, but deep down inside. All right. So, I'm being shown an image. It's it's um it's like a story, okay? That describes or helps us to understand a certain type of feeling. This is the feeling of being a mother. This may have nothing to do with this lifetime. But it's almost like this mother, well, I, I see her in that present moment of the story, and she has a real connection with her children. But it's almost like she needs her children in order, and she needs her children to be happy, and she needs to know that her children are happy with her in order for her to find happiness inside herself. So she has an attachment to her kids, attachment to her kids um, and their happiness in order then for her to be happy. But it, her, their judgment of her also matters. But this stems back to what was like an upbringing. And they're not necessarily saying this is this life or this is a past life, but this story is going to help us understand some of the emotional relationship here with attachment. It's almost like um, the woman in the story in younger years, she wasn't given a certain type of security within herself. And the greatest blessing that came into her life was having her own children so she could build that security. But the security is actually based on whether or not they love her or they're saying she's doing a good job as a mother. And if she can get that, then her she's golden. I mean, she's in heaven. So part of what we need to work on is giving you security inside yourself without needing anything else. Anybody else's approval, you're even making your kids happy. <laughs> I know it sounds really shocking because what parent doesn't want to have happy children or to be that great parent that that uh, developed happy lives for their kids? Like you put in all of that love and all that effort and it paid off, you know, and you get to reap the reward by seeing your kids live a really great life. Um, but they're also saying that um, you don't need, it, it's almost like, Whatever life they're living, it's not a judgment on you as a parent. That's the life that they needed to experience, that they needed to explore. So now it's, it's time to focus back on yourself in a way. And even for me to talk about it, it feels like a weird, like there's a weird glue and you're a bit kind of strange about it because I'm kind of pulling you off. You, you ever get something like you buy something and it has that like glue on it. It's kind of fun to like, like take it off and it's kind of like spongy and weird. Um, you're kind of like this. I'm like, just kind of like moving this glue and I'm kind of pulling you back off and um, you're kind of dumbfounded. I mean, you hear me, you're not totally shocked, but you're kind of um, taken aback a bit. And you're, you're instantly like, is that what all these cables are about? <laughs> and uh, I'm like, I'm not sure just yet. All we know is what we're seeing so far. But I will say talking about it is already loosening things up here in your heart, in your solar plexus, in your emotional gut. I mean, it goes even beneath the solar plexus into the stomach region. So, I mean, it's right in here. Just this oval shape of energy is actually starting to circulate and even circulate more in the throat. 
if you ever disappointed somebody on a level that, um, like, if you if you could really, um, if you didn't disappoint that person, then you'd be golden, you know. Sometimes, um, you know, kids want to impress their parents, right? Um, but no matter what they do, no matter how hard they try, and um, dad just won't ever acknowledge it, or mom, or there's something like um, disappointing somebody that was influential, but it was like you felt like you were a disappointment. There's something about this word disappointment that keeps coming up. I have to say that because even me talking about it is loosening things up as well. And I don't see that you were ever a disappointment. I don't feel that about you. So anybody's opinion doesn't is their opinion. But you feel him um, quite special. I mean, you feel quite wonderful. Like, I think people would be blessed to have you in their life. So if anything is um, on a different page than what I'm saying right there, just let that be their opinion. But that's the actual truth here. I mean, that's what your energy field is saying about you. And it's good that you're talking about this now because this is actually, it's almost like it, the glue was in here for a while. Like, it feels like it's been stuck for a bit. And it's time to really loosen this up and unlodge it. You, you really are a good listener too. Some things could be a little bit difficult to hear and even a little confusing, but you're open-minded and you're willing and you're okay with a little discomfort in order to understand and grow. All right, this is still quite tight though. I mean, we're going to go a layer deeper here with the heart and solar plexus. These are like the primary locations we're looking at. I still see this mother and the children and this uh, sort of feeling or the story about her. Oh, wow. This is the next thing about this story is that she can't actually tell how much her kids love her because she's constantly living in a reality where she needs to be everything for them to make sure that that she gets that some level of approval which is actually quite quite high um on the the list of like really bright and beautiful approval and that is when you will feel satisfied with yourself but your kids already love you a lot and so it's so I need to help your ears actually hear that love on a level that you're, you're not accessing it. You may know this. You may like, yeah, my kids love me. But, I mean, we need to go. We actually need to hear that. You, you need to actually receive that. Um, not from way up here on the, the scale of expectations or what I need in order to feel loved or to feel good enough or secure. Um, but way down here in the, the realm of... Um, it's like you could work hard or you could work smart, right? So there's there's something about altering the energy pattern um, and relaxing things down a bit and still getting the same amount of feeling and security from less. Man, this is really like bubbling your energy field. It's like the more I talk, you're hearing, you're responding. Um, and there's like, a, I don't know, like movements going on, kind of like a squishy movements going on. But it's positive because it's a movement. It's change. Okay, there's a something like a secret in your heart here. There's a like a golden pearl about it. Mm. 
it's adorable it comes in like a valentine's day box but it's like a plastic one i've seen something like this way back in like the 90s i'm sure they have them still today but i'm almost sure they had like those candy hearts and like a plastic where the bottom was red and the top was clear but i opened this up and it's like a little plastic valentine's day heart and then uh, there's a golden pearl inside Uh, is it about worth and value? Gosh, this makes me ache a bit. Makes me ache in my heart and my solar plexus. And they're literally combined. I mean, you, it's like, I mean, you have a, you have an individual heart chakra, individual solar plexus, but man, they're like, they're like um, Siamese twins. Like they're attached at the hip. Your your emotions, your heart is like super attached to each other, um, more so than your average bear. Okay, <laughs> so so when the heart feels something, the emotions feel it right alongside the heart. Like it's almost like they're dual. They're working to completely together as one, which means that you feel a lot. I'm gonna say that again worth and value. I just want to see how your energy field reacts to those words. And I show your energy field this golden pearl and this cute little Valentine's Day box. And what is your worth and value? Hmm. I don't know why it doesn't want to respond to that. It's like it goes silent. <sighs> But it's still quite on. I mean, it's not completely numb. It's not completely silent. There's still sound here. But it's not saying anything yet. Not giving me anything specific yet. Okay. Okay. So there's a little bit of movement going around. A little bit of discomfort. This is actually sparking up the sacral chakra here in the sexual body. Just a minute. Okay. This is great too because not only is sacral chakra now saying, um, you know, making some noise, the third eye is also making some noise now too. So, so they're piping up a bit. I'm going to go directly into your heart now. It looks a bit like uh, somebody took a, a tree and then they took a knife instead of like cutting, you know, these initials, love these initials. It's like they stabbed into the tree and gouged out a big old knot inside a tree. And I see that knot inside your heart. And it's kind of like a leftover hurt that never healed. And I mean, it aches. My heart actually aches. It's in a very unusual way. I don't feel like I was stabbed in the heart. I don't feel like, um, and I don't even feel like my heart was gouged out. It just is this way, but and it never repaired. And I can't, it's like, but it aches inside of there. It's a weird type of pain. It's almost like a tight muscle. Like one strand is just like a sciatic nerve or something. It's good. It's good to talk about this now too because because now I can relax this down. You're acknowledging what I see, you're acknowledging what I feel. I'm relaxing this on down. You're still wanting to stay separate from these issues. You still have a part of yourself that's outside of the circle of these issues. I'm going to just keep relaxing this on down. I'm just focusing all my attention on your heart portal, okay? And I'm going to take this um, little golden pearl. I'm just going to place it in that little notch there. It kind of fits perfect. Let's just see what it does. And we just got an empty heart-shaped plastic box. Hmm. 
Hmm. Man, I can't believe how much my heart hurts from this. It doesn't feel like heartbreak, though. I'm not sure how to describe the feeling, but it does hurt. I mean, I feel physical pain in my own heart. I'm going to go down this. Uh, it's almost like this This um, notch is sort of like sucking this inside of itself, and it's like creating kind of a pathway. So I'm just going to go down that and follow it along. So you got to break down these energies. We got to make it safe for this part of you to come back into your body. <sighs> Going in still. It's like, um, again... I mean, I don't just get to slide down the slide here. I'm in like head first and it's like I'm stuck because your energy is stuck. So I got to figure out what is the next thing to keep breaking this down? What kind of understandings can we um, discover here in order to help? So some part of your energy field is sort of like, just put light in there. Just do this or just do that. And um, But you also are saying, please go deep too. And I, I'm, I'm sort of weighing that what I could do at the surface versus what I could do if we went deep. Um, and I feel very strongly that the deeper we go, the more we're going to be able to heal. So we like get underneath that and then we lift it all up versus um, just slowly sort of um, dissolving it a little bit at a time. And get underneath that and then it all kind of digs up, you know? It's like trying to dig up an old, like a big old tree root, you know? It's hard to do it from above, but if you can dig underneath it, you can lift the whole thing out of the ground, right? It's kind of what it's like in here. So I tell that part of you about this. Ah, uh, so now this uh, side, the one that's um, kind of standing outside the circle, she's uh, walking towards me. She's kind of, she's, I don't know why I keep thinking she's as dry as chalk. Not in personality. But she does have a numb sensation to her. She makes me want to cry as she comes closer. And I show her that no matter what this looks like or whatever this is about, no matter how painful it is, you're still absolutely so beautiful. And when we work together, we can really discover and conquer extraordinary things. And it's going to help you glow brighter and feel more solid inside yourself and for yourself. Because you don't need to be anybody or anything more for anybody else. It's, it's about you as the center of the universe now. And that's not selfish at all. It's just, it's almost like giving you security that you, I don't know if you didn't realize that you had it, but you, you could really grow a lot from having more security with yourself. She's a young girl. She looks like, I don't know, seven or eight, but she looks very smart. Like she, she, the way her eyes look at me, it's like she's going to tell me what to do. And, uh, and it feels like we're in a classroom setting where I'm the teacher, um, and she's telling the teacher that the teacher just doesn't understand um, the teacher. And, and this is actually the answer to that question. Um, so the way that she's looking at me, it's like she's looking at me like she's smart. I mean, I don't know. There's something very smart in her eyes, and it's appreciative. I, it's uh, not on the spirit side. It's on the human side, though. But she doesn't say anything. It's just her eyes looking at me. And I'm looking back. And I really am like an old teacher and I have my hair like pulled back in this big old bun and it's all kind of uh, 
dry hair like uh, black like black into grays and silvery colors and white and there's still quite a lot of black but I'm definitely older I mean I could be 60 years old and it's like a one-room schoolhouse I mean it's not like it's like maybe has um, I don't know 15 desks and there's an apple on my desk at the front of the class and here you are standing in front of me this version of you like you know, like you know, aggressively know something, assertively, like you, you're, you know more, like you're stepping across the line of what you know, but you're not saying anything, you're just using your eyes. So I actually just bend my down and I, I just am at my knees so we can see eye to eye. I'm not just like super tall over you. And I actually just sit straight down onto the ground, so you're much taller than me. And I, I tell you, it's okay to speak, you know. I'm, I can be a good listener. Or at least I can try my best. Maybe we could just simply talk as best as we know how about this stuff. Maybe you could start by telling me something. It's anger on the other side of her eyes. She starts by showing me an apple that is perfect and then an apple that you bit into and there's a worm inside of it. But still you eat the apple with the worm because that's as good as it's going to get. At least you have an apple to eat. I show her moldy bread and if you just take out the moldy parts, the bread's fine. I know, I know this trick. I was in college. <laughs> Let's see what she says. She says, I don't want to eat food that has worms in it. I simply don't want to eat an apple that has a worm in it. She asked me if this is as good as it gets. I ask her if this is as good as it gets. Spirit Realm won't let me give her an apple that has no worm in it. There, it's like she has to speak and she has to talk and she has to say things. I don't just get to fix it for her. She actually has to do it herself because she's strong enough. She's not a weakling by any means. I mean, she's strong enough. She hasn't figured it out just yet. And I'm just looking into her eyes with my truth about this apple. That I say nothing. But I also soften my eyes and I create an apple that has a worm in it, and then I eat it. <laughs> and I say, what's, it's like, it's like, uh, this worm is my friend. He just wanted to be a part of my life right now. So I just ate the apple, and then we went our separate ways, and then I just ate the apple, the parts I wanted to eat, and then I let the rest go back to the earth. And I just, I said that was okay. I chose not to feel emotional about it. I chose not to feel degraded by it. I chose not to feel as though I am less than because I don't have an apple that doesn't have a worm in it. She says, will you take the worm out for me? Hmm. I need to just pause for a moment and really look at what she's saying here. It's not just, you know, A plus B equals C. Sometimes there's something else being said. And what that really means to her. What I do is I touch her third eye and I touch her hand, the top of her hand, and there's these sparks, like sparkling star type energies that um, 
kind of reveal themselves for a brief moment. And I tell her that she's got the magic inside of her, that she could do anything that she puts her mind to. And what does your mind say about this? She gets mad and she says, I just want you to give me an apple that doesn't have a worm in it. I'm gonna, I'm creating an apple tree. And I wanna, and she has to pick the apple. She can pick as many apples as she wants. If there's a thousand apples on this apple tree, are all of them full of worms to you? She's very stubborn and she's still angry. Even when we're standing under this apple tree and I'm, I'm asking her this question. Look at all these perfect red apples. So pick one. Pick two. Pick a hundred. And guarantee you're bound to find one that doesn't have a worm in it. <sighs> okay. Now a man shows up and he's got a shotgun. And he's like a farmer type. And I keep saying sort of like he hunted and he got a rabbit today. And he's got the rabbit by the ears. And he's uh, kind of missing some teeth. He looks kind of dirty and rough. But um, he also looks like he's... Um, He's kind of up with the rooster, you know, kind of guy. Like, like you know what you're going to get with him. It doesn't matter that he looks rough and stuff. You know what you're going to get with him. There's a consistency, even if there's a roughness here. And it's like she can't ever please him. She shows me... Um, when he comes forward, he has a shotgun and then he's got a rabbit and, and she looks at him, but she looks down at the ground and she doesn't use those smart, strong eyes. She just looks at the ground and kind of away. Like she's weaker than he is. But if she looks at me, then she's dominant. She's an alpha in comparison to me. And I ask her why she doesn't stand strong in front of her dad is what this man is representing. Because nothing I ever do will be good enough. It'll always have a worm in it. And I say, then be good enough for yourself, right? And it's sort of like it's not that easy because he's my dad. I want him to be proud of me. I want him to see what I can do, because I see what I can do. <sighs> mm. Say, so what are you going to do now? She doesn't want to talk about apples anymore. She also doesn't want to go home. But she will go home when she has to. And I mean, this is sort of like a very, lots of land. I mean, you could walk and walk like, it's like back in the day type of experience here. You could walk several miles to get to the one room schoolhouse and that was normal. And it was normal to be outside for hours and your parents wouldn't see you and that was no big deal. It feels like that here, too. She never, she never um, was able to heal from that relationship with her father. <sighs> she was always trying to be good enough. If it wasn't for him, it was for someone else. Always trying to be good enough. And she used her smarts and her strength, actually, to encourage that response out of others. But it didn't always work in her favor. It didn't always, like, create the right effect. But it, she did try. But because she never was able to kind of stop doing that or even really know that she was doing it in the first place, it sort of stayed. That attachment just stayed in that lifetime.
But they're showing me what it's like once this uh, father had passed away, and it's like it, there was a burden that released. And she actually felt like she could breathe in a way that she hadn't experienced it before. And it brought freedom and a new sense of uh, life for her. And she became truly joyful, actually. I mean, that's what it feels like. Real joy. Is she, she didn't know that she was lacking it on this level. I mean, she's really joyful. And it's like once her dad passes away, all that energy shifts and she starts to just love herself. Because he's not there to make her feel insecure. This is this is in, a notch in your heart here. Now I can actually do the thing that you had wanted me to do and I'm going to place my hand in your heart and just shine light in there. And I shine I actually reach my hand into your heart but through your heart into the heart of that girl too. And I shine light into her heart as well at the same time. And I'm bringing her forward so that she can be more present, uh, more a part of who you are. Because as we reconcile that life and those energies, you're going to have a new sense of freedom inside yourself. <sighs> that feels a lot better, way more peaceful. And that bundle of cables, it doesn't have the same energetic volume. There's still still energy, kind of tight energies, but this is really getting some breathability going on that was not there when we started. Feels a lot better. Thank you so much for exploring this session with me and for being open-minded to share too. It's a real pleasure to meet you. And uh, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching. I hope you all have a great day.